If you look up the average salary for a senior data engineer, you'll probably find some number around 150 to possibly even upwards of 200K, at least according to Glassdoor. And then if you go beyond that and start looking at Facebook, Airbnb, and Stripe, you'll see anywhere from upwards of 250K to maybe 500K. So it makes sense that you click this video and you want to know what does it take to become a senior data engineer. After all, making anywhere somewhere around 300K puts you in that top few percentiles of US earners. I know sometimes people like to point out the fact that with inflation, it really doesn't feel that much, but it is, it's a lot and it does put you in that top percentile. So I get it. So in this video, I wanted to talk about what does it take to become a senior data engineer? What skills do you need to pick up and how should you construct your career so you can go through and ensure that you take the right steps to become a senior data engineer? And we're gonna talk through that. In the beginning, we're talking about a lot of the skills and attributes that you will likely have as a senior data engineer. And then towards the end, we'll talk about some gotchas as well, because as much as I'm gonna talk about tactics, there are always companies that for one reason or another, it just seems hard to get a raise or a promotion. So also need to consider that as we're talking through becoming a senior data engineer. Now, for most people, in order to become a senior data engineer, you must first be a mid-level data engineer. And they're going through the process of figuring out, okay, what does it take for me to go from mid to senior data engineer? And let's go through the different attributes because obviously this is going to range from everything from technical skills to soft skills, right? Like you are going to need a broad range. So we're gonna go through it here. So let's start with the technical foundation, right? Like this is where you build all your skills. If you were to envision this as a diagram, you could see this kind of as your house's foundation. You have to be technical, right? Like you wanna be a data engineer, you have to have a certain level of technical skills. And initially as a junior engineer, you're probably doing a bunch of tasks. You're able to solve isolated technical problems and build you know, code and pipelines very easily. And then at the mid-level, you kind of expand and go beyond that, right? You're now not just building little tasks, you are delivering projects, right? Which increases complexity. You're not just having to think about, hey, how, how does this task impact the rest of the code base? It's like, how does changing the code base in the way that I want to change it? Or how does delivering this feature or this big project uh, impact the code base as well as end users? And so your technical skills have to kind of continue to grow. You're not just trying to gather more programming languages at this point. You're also probably likely starting to understand how systems start to interact with each other. So your technical skills are unavoidable. You have to build this as your base. And for data engineers, that generally means being very solid as a programmer with SQL, with data modeling and building data pipelines. And you've probably picked up some other skills in there as well, including the cloud and networking in between systems, as well as possibly some specialty skills all along this way. So you've built this foundation using those tools and task form. You understand how to deliver more on the bigger system form. And now you're kind of pushing to that next level where you start having an idea and an opinion about a lot of these solutions, like maybe where it's best to use certain tools, where there are certain trade-offs and where you're having to kind of make all of these decisions that start going from just, you know, one system to maybe even expanding your entire team or even some little bit of other teams that you're working with. But all that technical knowledge is not necessarily useful if you don't know how to get stuff done. I wrote down in the notes, get shit done, which maybe we bleep that out. But regardless of all the fancy tools you have, the next point is you actually have to be able to deliver projects with them. At this point, you're maybe just starting to get an inkling about impact, which we'll talk about later. But really, you're just learning how to deliver projects, right? You might not know what the right projects are, but you're learning how all projects will get blocked and how you can unblock them, right? Because all projects will get blocked. How do you unblock them? How do you get stuff done in a company? That means a few things, right? There's actually a few sub bullets I'd like to add here. One, you know how to just drive the project forward, right? That generally means things like if there is a blocker, moving it or knowing who to reach out to to move it without necessarily having to go get your manager unless for some reason someone is just not being cooperative you're likely starting to become proactive, right? Like this is somewhere where you start cutting in between that, that line between mid and senior. You're not just waiting for someone to bring you projects. You start thinking of projects yourself. You also proactively start trying to solve problems before they arise, right? You're getting stuff done without people asking you. It also means you generally remove ambiguity. And that's another kind of bullet here that I kind of put under getting stuff done because I can't tell you how many times I've seen ambiguity be the reason someone didn't do a task. They weren't certain on how a task should be done or what the goal was. And so they didn't do it or they just kind of spent some time dawdling or they would click open the task, you know, like opening up another tab, look at it, close it and feel like they did something but didn't do anything because there was no clarity around that task. And so making sure you remove ambiguity before someone comes into a task, whether that's you or some other engineer. And then of course, you're starting to communicate, right? Like you're showing the fact that, hey, 
again, I'm moving this project forward. I'm communicating with other teams. I'm communicating with stakeholders, letting them know where projects are. I'm not afraid to say, hey, we're blocked somewhere. Here's what we're doing to fix it, right? Like I usually tell people to do updates where they just go through and say, here's the project. Here's what we're doing and doing well, right? Like what's actually been completed this week, what's been blocked and what we're planning to do next week and how to plan to get unblocked. Even doing that simple communication keeps everyone in the know. And yes, it takes an extra, you know, minute or two or longer if you really want to make sure it's a good update, but it ensures that people feel confident in your ability to not just, again, deliver things technically, but let everyone know what's going on. Because if they don't know what's going on, eventually, right, four weeks in, five weeks in, six weeks in, someone's going to start getting nervous that you're not giving them updates. Now, again, one of the notes of a senior engineer is you're starting to think big picture, right? You're starting to think about how you communicate externally. You're starting to think about how do these projects impact not just our team, right? I'm not just doing a migration for my team. How do these projects impact the overall business? I've talked about this uh, in my newsletter where I talk about the importance of your in data, understanding the metrics that run your business. You know, what are the key metrics that actually impact either your business or the teams that you support? Because the more you understand that, the more you understand the work that you're doing and the more you can be again proactive about suggesting maybe a better project to do or asking the right questions to actually get insights from people in terms of like, well, why do they want this? Is it just curiosity? All of those other issues that arise that are again, not technical, but might require a technical solution, but you'll only figure it out by slowly asking the right questions. You also wanna start understanding like how does budget work overall, right? Cause like sometimes when you're a more junior or mid-level engineer, you get in these situations where, hey, why did we not get budget for something we think is important? Are we not communicating it right to the business? Like, do they not understand why it's such a pain point, right? If you can't show the business why something is valuable, if you can't align it with their goals, you'll never actually end up getting budget to take on projects. So again, all those technical skills you're working on matter a lot less. Now, I've already kind of referenced a little bit about scope, but just to give a quick uh, hit on that again, your scope is going to change, right? I have this image where I, Initially, your scope is generally tasks for junior engineers. For more mid-level engineers, you're probably doing internal projects that are either features or projects or something that's you know a little more consolidated. And then as you start getting more into that senior level, that's where these projects start spanning beyond just your team or just completely shift the way your team is operating completely. And so that's where scope kind of comes in, right? You're taking on bigger and bigger projects. You know, a junior is all about yourself. At the mid-level, you're probably just managing a project yourself at senior you're starting to maybe manage mid and junior engineers and helping them out and grow them as well as drive the project forward so that scope is going to increase next of course you're starting to think more and more about impact right like this is the the crux this is the pyramid uh, like if you want to talk about the top of the pyramid you can kind of look at it as technical foundation you have things like getting stuff done and influence as one of the pillars you have thinking about the business and big picture thoughts as another you have scope and complexity in, in kind of another, and then on the very pinnacle, all driving this is your ability to find impact and figure out what that means, right? Which means your ability to actually do projects that the business values, not just something that you find interesting, not just something that is a pet project, not just some work that maybe was less about driving business impact and more just about driving some internal data team efficiencies. It's about really connecting with the business and starting to push towards becoming a strategic partner. Now, I will point out that every business and every company has a different set of attributes overall, right? That they expect a senior engineer to have. Some companies are focused on time, like how long have you been at the company? Great, you're gonna get a promotion. Others have a very clear rubric, but these are the things that I've seen over and over again be the signs that someone is growing into a senior engineer. And now one of the things you'll notice is I've talked about a lot of skills that a senior engineer has when I'm talking about growing into being a senior engineer. And there's a few reasons for that. One, uh, you know, most companies will not provide promotions until you are showing the skill set of the next level, right? Like it is a, they often call it a lagging indicator, which yes, can be argued that that is a way to get free labor or more hard work from you. That is 100% true. It can be. But generally, it is also a method to ensure that if we give you this promotion, it wasn't just a three month stint where you were like operating at some level. And then after that, you kind of sit back and pull back. And then there's an awkward discussion of do we fire the person or not? But that brings me into the gotcha section, right? Like that is one of the gotchas. You're going to work for some companies where they're going to keep dangling that promotion in front of you over and over again. And you just never seem to get it. You never seem to do the right thing. That might be a good time for you to consider finding a new company, right? If you feel confident that you should get a promotion, 
Sometimes you have to go to a new company to get that promotion. So don't feel like you have to stay at your current company if you feel like you are delivering on these attributes. Two, you kind of have to deliver on all of these and not be overly focused on one, right? Like you can be very technical, but if you can't drive projects forward, it's going to hold you back. If you can't communicate, it's going to hold you back. In fact, that was something that I remember when I was talking to someone at Facebook, they kept telling the senior engineer who wanted to go to staff, and this is obviously a big, bigger jump, but it happens the same between mid and, and senior, that they kept telling them that, hey, you need to work on these skills around communicating, on how you actually operate, not just how, you, how technical you are, and the person refused, and so they kept not getting promoted. And so you do need to be wary that it can't just be you getting good at one of these areas, it's going to be you slowly kind of building all of these areas. Uh, another gotcha is moving too quickly. Now, don't get me wrong. What's nice about some big tech companies and other companies is that they make it very obvious. They're like, here are the metrics or attributes that we expect you to hit to get to senior engineer. And if this is the only company you've worked at, you can focus completely on the impact section and focus just on getting really good at the tech stack internally at that company and never getting good at building beyond that, not building a technical base beyond that, which in a lot of technical companies, they have so much stuff figured out for you can make your life really easy internally, but very hard externally. So you don't ever really build up a technical base beyond just the technical base that supports this specific company. So you shoot through their promotion cycle because you're just focused on impact and just learning just enough technical skills that you never build up a solid enough base that when you get that promotion, great, it happens. But if you go to a new company, you're not operating at the same level because you don't have the same tool set. You don't have the, you know, everything's well integrated kind of workflows. And you never went out and built your own projects or, or tried new things yourself. So you didn't have a good base. And so, yeah, you built yourself up, you sped through it, but again, you built a shaky foundation. And so you're going to have a hard time in other companies that are maybe less technically focused. So I think that's another gotcha that a lot of people will face as they're trying to become a senior engineer. I see lots of articles like, Hey, how to become a senior engineer real fast. And it's great you know, but some of these people have either one built up a technical base because they've been programming since they were 15 or in other cases, again, they've just focused so heavily on becoming experts in uh, that company's technical stack that it's going to be hard to switch. And of course, some of them are just super talented and, you know, it's okay to, I think, take the time to really learn. I think that's one of the truths is like, there's a lot of rushing, but you do want to kind of take the time and actually spend time as a junior thinking about reflecting what you're learning, adding more technical skills. You do want to spend some time in the mid level. Like that's a great time to really incubate your skill set, take on projects, learn about different toolings and not again, feel like you got to run to become a senior data engineer and then kind of continue to build up from there. But again, I get it. Like I talked about the salaries at the beginning, you could be making a six figure plus salary at 200, 300 K if you can get to senior data engineer. So I get it. It makes sense for why we want to go there, but you do want to slowly build up these skills. I kind of view it almost as like an ebb and flow situation where you at junior, you pick up a bunch of technical skills. So you learn, you can almost view it as a bunch of different streams that you start learning. So whatever JavaScript, SQL, Java, data modeling. And yeah, I said JavaScript, which, you know, is not necessarily for data engineers, but you know, you pick up a bunch of technical skills and then you take some moment to reflect on them. So the streams kind of come together, you become a mid-level engineer. And then as you become mid-level engineer, you start learning new skills that kind of expand, you know, how to drive projects forward, how to start finding impact, things like that. And that, that expands. And then you kind of go in again at senior and you start focusing again on what senior engineer means. And you kind of just keep ebbing and flowing with skill sets where you learn a ton, reflect, condense, learn a ton, reflect, condense. Overall, I hope this was helpful in understanding how to kind of grow into being a senior data engineer. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below because I'd love to answer them. With that, guys, I want to say thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks all. Goodbye.